Timekeeping is likely going to be an integral part of any engagement that you may be running, whether it be accounting and bookkeeping or tax or both. Accordingly, and while there are applications out there that track time, as long as you're using Smartsheet to manage your projects, there's a very good chance you'll find the use case of using Smartsheet for keeping time very valuable. Based on that, I've created this lesson here, which is going to show you how to lay out exactly the columns you need to lay out and how you can even create a web form that will allow employees or subcontractors to go in and log the time that they spent on the very same projects that you're managing in Smartsheet. Let's see what this looks like. Timesheets is an interesting uh, solution that uh, you can set up in Smartsheet. Uh, of course, there are many time tracking apps out there that do that and do it really well and integrate with your accounting software. But if you wanted to, you could certainly set up a timesheet application using Smartsheet, and I'll show you how it's done. So we have to think in terms of what information are we looking to track. So the primary column probably should be the name of the person whose time is being submitted, right? So let's do that. Name. And then the next thing would probably be the date. Right, the date that the work was performed. And then after that, we probably want to have some kind of an item code that, or activity code, right? Now let's say that you're a QuickBooks user. What you could do is you could grab your item list from QuickBooks. And I'm just going to do a quick sample here. And I'll show you how you can drop it in and make this into a drop down so that people have to choose very specifically one of your actual item codes. So at least in that way, you're getting it somewhat synced with your accounting software. So if I actually run a report in QuickBooks, and I'm doing this on my other screen while I close all my windows, you can go to Reports, and then you go to List, and then you can just get your item listing report. And then we can export that to Excel. and then you can copy and paste that in so let's do that real quick but rather than bother with a whole long accounting list like that let's just go to Excel now so let's say we want to keep it simple so my item codes and let's say I have an accounting or bookkeeping practice might be uh, reconciliation or bank rec and perhaps uh, review financial statement review and compilation just putting the financial statements together um, payroll right let's say these are just a few basic ones you can obviously increase the list ad infinitum so let's go here under activity code now we're gonna make this a drop-down list and I'm just gonna paste those in just like that it's that easy and now I've got them in there and obviously if you want to add to or change the list just double click it and go in there or uh, keep an Excel kind of version so that you can drop updates in and copy and paste those. So we've got a name, we've got a date, we've got an activity code. Um, we can do the hours, right? So we can have them key in their hours in decimal format. Um, one thing Smartsheet doesn't have that I wish it did was when you look at the different formats, there's no time format. It would be cool if I could do a time format itself so I can do starting and ending time and then calculate the difference to come up with the total hours. That's how I've done this in the past when I've set up with Excel. Maybe in a future update that will be available. Hint, hint to my Smartsheet friends. In the meantime, let's just say we want total hours. So you just key your hours in. Now where this gets a little tricky perhaps, and you might want to clarify, is how they're going to enter their time. So in other words, I don't want them necessarily entering one hour and 15 minutes like this. I want them saying 1.25, right? That would be how I would want them to do it. So we've got the date, the name, the date, the activity code, the total hours, and what else would we want to get from them? Maybe some comments, right? Maybe we want them to give us some comments on that. Uh, of course, we could have them use the discussions tab, but that's a little different. So, uh, description. Right, and anything else that we would maybe want to track in terms of timesheets? Perhaps the rate, right? So let's get a rate in there. Now, where's that rate going to come from? We could create a little lookup table, right? 
to get the rate. But I don't want to get too sophisticated for this purpose. So maybe they just key in the rate that they're getting paid. Maybe based on the employee, they're going to key in the rate that they get paid, and maybe it's the same rate no matter what they're doing. Right? But in theory, you could also create a little lookup table. And if I give you a, if I show you an example, here's a sample time tracker, and this is in the templates that Smartsheet provides. You can create a little rate table where these would be your services. Um, and then uh, and then it looks up the rates to multiply by the hours to come up with the total. So you could certainly do that. And when we look at the formula writing chapter, we're going to find out whether or not Smartsheet allows us to do a VLOOKUP to make that rate table process very easy. Meanwhile, let's insert one more column to the right, and there's going to be total. And simple formula equals total hours, oops, wrong key, total hours times the rate. And maybe what I want to do is put the total hours right next to the rate, just so everything kind of numeric stays together. And we can certainly format all these um, like numbers, number format. We can do the total in dollars. So we got total hours, the rate's really in dollars too, isn't it? See, it's fun. You just play with this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something really cool, which is as follows. Uh, we should probably do the name. Well, the name is the primary column, so I can't really change that. But I'm thinking if we wanted to, we could use a non-primary column for the name and that way we can create a drop down so that the employees can pick their names that way. And the reason for doing something like that is to prevent from somebody entering a typo while they're entering it in. And I'll explain to you why. We're now going to use uh, Smartsheet's web form feature to create a web form where your employees can now go in and they can enter their time. So we're going to click down here where it says web forms. And it's so easy to do because all it is is all it's going to do is it's going to take the information based on the columns that we've set up. So we're going to create a new web form. And what we don't need here is we don't need the total, so we're going to get rid of that. We don't need the rate, presumably we're going to know that. Right? So what information do we need from the employee or contractor who's entering their time? Name, date, activity code, the description, and the total hours. That's really all we need. Uh, over here, let's add a file upload. Let's click and drag that in, because this way, and that should go right at the end after total hours. There it is. Come on. Perfect. Uh, so this way, if there's a relevant document they want to attach, they can upload that document to us, and it comes right in here into Smartsheet as an attachment to that row. It works beautifully. So now let's go to Form Options, and with a paid account, you can choose to show it plain or branded. So branded, you can actually get your logo in here. I haven't bothered to do that with this account yet. Um, and over here we can say our right, confirmation. So once they click submit on the form, what's it going to say? Thank you, your response has been added to my smart sheet. That's fine. All right, thank you, we've received your time. We'll review it and get back to you. Whatever you want to put there. All this is pretty straightforward. Then we can have it reload the same form for another entry, right? And have the same comment. So that might not be a bad idea so that they can enter at multiple time entries. That makes sense for this context, that's for sure. And if we wanted to, we could redirect them to a set URL. So I'm going to go with the reload option. And then we can say enable confirmation email. So this will also send them an email uh, to confirm for them what they've submitted, which is probably a nice thing to do for them. And then we have the uh, other option here where we have to decide where the new entry is going to go. So let's say we want new entries to go to the bottom of the sheet so that the newest entries will always be at the bottom. Now. You want to think about this. If this is going to be a timesheet that's going to be accumulating time, let's say throughout the course of an entire year, you may want to rethink that and do it at the top of the sheet. Because if you do it at the bottom, over time a lot of these entries can get buried. And there's ways around that too, using filters and things. So let's just say we do it at the top of the sheet. And then the advanced form options, we can remove the uh, Smartsheet branded kind of comments here, powered by Smartsheet web forms, if we want to. And then we click Save. And our web form has been created, and you can use this URL here to just take somebody right to the form on the web. So let's do that, and then we'll close this. Just copy and paste it, and we're going to enter our time. So name, 
Seth David. Date is today. It's today. Oops. All right. Activity code. Financial statement review. Description. I reviewed financial statements. It was fun. Total hours, six and a half. And then, again, I can attach a file if I needed to. And, of course, it takes me to a window where I can browse. So just click to attach the file. That's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to do it. And then send me a copy of my responses email address. So I'll just put in my Nerd Enterprises email. And submit. And then, like I chose, it takes me back so I can do another time entry. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now let's go back to Smartsheet and let's refresh. And there's my entry. Pretty clear. Then I put in the rate and I say Seth gets $185 an hour and so that total calculates for 120250 dollars pretty much clear as mud and then as you enter the entries here's the other thing I would do is I would say insert column to the right and let's do a checkbox and let's say paid Y or just paid since we're doing it as a checkbox this way I can mark them off once I know they've been paid once I know this time has been reviewed and you can do approved and paid right so let's insert column to the left approved and maybe for something like this, we can even do symbols just to make it fun. So we have red, yellow, green, light, right? So we click OK. So over here I say, all right, he's good to go. Red means not good. We got a problem. We got to review it. And the delete key gets rid of those. So, and then of course I do the conditional formatting and all the other stuff. And, you know, when you're uh, reviewing time, what you could do, let's say you're reviewing time for a particular date range, you know, you can sort this by date and then you can subtotal it, right? You can, again, you can write formulas. Equals sum, and I can sum up everything above just like on a spreadsheet. $185 total. So very easy once the information's in here to move it around, manipulate it, get it sorted and subtotaled the way I want so then I can go into my accounting software and enter it and process it and all that good stuff. That, my friends, is how you can use Smartsheet to... Uh, capture time to develop your own sort of timesheet application in case that's something you'd like to do. As always, if you have questions, please post them in the answers forum if you're a student enrolled with schoolofbookkeeping.com. If not, take advantage of our public forums and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I possibly can with the answers to your questions. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Keeping time in the smart sheet is a pretty simple and straightforward process as you've now seen. And in the process, I actually cheated and showed you a little bit of a preview into what we're going to be looking at next, which is how to use web forms to capture information. I showed you how to set one up to capture the timesheet information. Now we're going to look at how to use web forms to capture and keep track of leads that you may have coming in, which may eventually turn into either a bookkeeping or accounting or a tax prep engagement.